Hey, what's up, good people? Welcome back to Stock Up with Larry Jones. Go ahead and hit the like, subscribe, and the notification bell, and hit all if you're new to the page. If you're with me, been rolling with me for a while, go ahead and hit the like button, okay? Hey, make sure that you check out, uh, this is Moo Moo Monday. Make sure you check out the third link below. Make sure you get your 16 free stock, up to 16 free stock, and as you deposit more you get more as you can see with a hundred dollars five free stocks plus a free stock of so five with a thousand dollar deposit 15 free stock plus um, another so five stock and then lastly also too this is also brought to you by stock up you come and learn from the best uh, 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 I was going to say the best in the West, but we don't all live in the West. All right. Learn from myself. Stocks with Josh Keenan Grace. Here we go. Mommy traders and uh, stock curry. OK, let's get right into it. Hey, it's a crazy day today. A yo yo day. The um, S&P, the uh, Dow is vacillating between negative and positive, And we're just going to get right into it. So the last down day on Monday was in June. The question is, will we do that again? The last down Monday, should I say, was back in June. We have had 15, I believe, consecutive Mondays, uh, a positive with the exception of Labor Day. So Monday has always been a rebound day, but um, we're going to see what happens today. All right. So um, the, the pre-markets was down until uh, Bill Ackman uh, tweeted something, okay? We'll go to that tweet in a minute, right? On Friday, the S&P uh, uh, day, uh, the, I'm sorry, on Friday, the S&P 200-day moving average had its long-term trend line snapped, and that was 42.33, the S&P the long the long term trend line was forty two thirty three. All right. Let's just get right into that. OK. And then earlier today, all of the Magnificent Seven was uh, trending a bit higher. Let's go to the S&P. What were we talking about that long term trend line? Uh, you know what? I got it here on my phone, too. Let me uh, blow that up. As you can see the day, let me try to expand that. So as we can see, we're right now 4240, uh, I believe. Yep, 4240. And uh, it was 4223 was the long-term trend. Here we go. And we broke beneath it. So as you can see, I have the five-day. So 4220 uh, or 4230 actually is about right there. It was actually 4233. So that's where we bottomed out and we came back and it looks like we're heading back to it. We're just, uh, we just hit above it again at 42.35 ish. Okay. You know, you guys know that that is not exact. All right. So what happened to the market itself? This is what happened to the market right now. U S treasury yields fall from 16 year high, uh, as Bill Ackman ends a bearish bet. So he had a bearish bet. All right. So let's read a little further. Here we go. The 10 year U.S. Treasury yield fell back on Monday, which is which is today after rising above 5 percent for the first time in 16 years. Good grief. Continuing the recent sharp swing in global bond markets. Right. The 10 year yield. The benchmark for asset prices across the globe rose early on Monday, which was today, to a peak of 5.02 percent and its highest level since July of 2007. The increase capped a multi-week route in bond prices as investors bet the U.S. Federal Reserve would keep interest rates at their current high levels for longer. Remember, the Fed keep, keeps saying higher for longer. Higher for longer, higher for longer. All right. Uh, so then what happened was the yields later slid from the peak, accelerating after Bill, uh, billionaire investor Bill Ackman said he was ditching his bearish bet on long term treasuries. So he had a bearish bet on long term treasuries. All right. 
Um, they traded at 4.85% earlier in the afternoon in New York. As you know, that's where uh, uh, our headquarters is, the financial headquarters. So look at this, good people. There is too much risk in the world to remain short bonds at current long-term rates. All right. So understand this. Let me blow this up because this is important for uh, Bill Ackman. All right. So here we go. There is too much risk in the world. Right. Uh, to remain short bond at current long-term rates. Ackman posted on X. All right. Formerly known as Twitter, saying that the growth in the U.S., was weaker than the mainstream data suggests. The hedge fund manager first disclosed his short position in 30-year treasuries in August, adding to the pressure on bond markets. The 30-year U.S. yield fell to 5.01%, right? Having earlier touched a high of 5.18%. So Bill Ackman actually... Um, um, calls a reversal in the market. And now everyone is trying to figure out this market. It's a doozy to figure out. Let's see where things are even right now as we speak. Okay. So let's just line these up. So we got the Dow here. We got the S and P and let's put the NASDAQ up. As we can see, the Dow, again, is mostly flat negative, right? S&P is, eh, I would just call this a flat day, uh, if you ask me, other than the NASDAQ. I would call this a flat day. And as you can see, it, it, it came down, ran up, and now it's cooling off, right? And so these are some of the things we want to look at, right? So nearly a third of the S&P uh, companies will be reporting this week starting tomorrow, all right? Nearly a third of the S&P will re be reporting this week starting tomorrow. So here's the schedule. Again, for those of you that are trying to make money off of earnings, you guys know that I am a buy the rumor, sell the news type of guy, right? I don't hold into earnings. For those of you that have been killing it by doing that, congratulations to you. But I happen to know a lot of you guys are getting wiped out trying to play earnings. OK, so uh, we got so we got Microsoft and Google, which is Meta, will be reporting tomorrow. Remember that Microsoft and Google, a.k.a. Alphabet, will be reporting tomorrow, Tuesday after closing bell, followed by Meta, a.k.a. Facebook, which will be reporting on Wednesday. OK, and then we got Amazon on Thursday. Now, what else is happening? Bitcoin is up at the time of recording this. Bitcoin is up over 31 percent. I'm sorry, over thirty one thousand dollars. I wish it was thirty one percent over thirty one thousand dollars. Let's take a look at Bitcoin. As we could see here. Bitcoin is up over 31K right now, 31,000. In the last day, we could see it is up uh, quite handsomely at 1,200 uh, bucks or so in the last week. Look at that, up 10%. So Bitcoin has been climbing as the market has been falling, actually. Let's look at the month. Look at this. Bitcoin is up almost 17% for the month. But today it is up 4% alone. And you guys, let's just take a look. Let's have a little fun with this. All right, Dogecoin, as some of you guys call it. Dogecoin, as you can see for the day, is uh, up almost 5%. And uh, for the week, it's up. Look at that. And then Shib, you guys know I'm, I'm team Shib, okay? Um, so for all you Doge lovers, I know Doge is doing better. So SHIB, as you can see, uh, 7.2, as we can see here, 2.63% uh, for the day. What are we for the week? About 2.20 for the week. And we're down for the month. But hey, this is where I've been buying. I've been buying right here. All right. Uh, so for those of you that wants to know, 
Whenever it goes under seven or seven, I start to buy more. Not a suggestion for you to buy, hold the sale, just showing you what I'm doing. So now the question is, what is going to happen tomorrow between Microsoft and Google? Let's take a quick look at that. As we can see here, Microsoft and Google, no, that's both of those are Amazon. Ah, okay. Microsoft, what happened to Microsoft? Let's do that. Sorry about that, good people. There we go. So as we can see, <laughs> Microsoft and Google are kind of in lockstep today. They followed the market. They followed S&P, went up today. Um, all of the Magnificent Seven stock were up green this morning. So if you had put calls, uh, you may be in a little trouble, but actually right here around the 945 was the reversal and it has been trending up. So we will see what uh, the end is going to be. We will see what's going to happen at closing bell. Sorry, good people um, having issues. Of course, uh, this is the worst time of the year uh, for my allergies. So it's been an interesting weekend. I met a lot of interesting people. I was in Louisiana last week, uh, met the humble trader, got pictures, met the Dogecoin uh, millionaire. What an interesting story. And uh, on yesterday, I met up with these guys. Yep, met up with these guys from Earn Your Leisure. Those are my guys. You know the guys. You know Troy, Rashad, you know Ian, the master investor. Hey, I absolutely love what they're doing, um, uh, bringing uh, financial literacy uh, to underserved communities uh, and people that don't know that they have access. Yes, they do. Uh, have the access, but they don't know that they have the access. So in closing, I just want to say that this market is a tricky one. Man, it's just been a reversal, a reversal. Today, the market has just been flip-flopping and uh, no one has a crystal ball. You know, we really don't know what's going to happen, even for these earnings on tomorrow, because this could be a reversal. And so um, I'm just, I'm, I'm just on the side of caution. Uh, and that's where I am. Caution, less trades, because I've been here before. You chase one way, you lose money. Then you try to go the other way. Then the market reversed and you lose money. And this is one of those days where, you know, uh, you just I kind of trade off the news and that's it. Now, I have uh, been adding to my positions. OK, let's see if I can pull that up for you guys. All right. Now, you guys know how I have been uh, sharing with you guys some of the plays that I've been DCAing in. Let me take a snapshot, all right? And um, I just wanna show you guys that um, on red days, I simply add to my positions on some of these stocks. Remember, anything I say is not a suggestion for you to buy, hold, or sell. You do what suits you, okay? And uh, let's see if we could get that to come up here. Boom. All right. So, yes, you see a lot of red there, right? I'm not worried about that red. Let's pull that up. I'm not worried about the red because I know that if I keep DCAing in the red rather than gambling on earnings, that I have a better chance of uh, coming out looking a little greener. So as you can see, I'm adding a Tesla. Yes, I, I really should have been piling up when it was 210. I missed it because I'm making content. VOO, which is the S&P 500, I'm down 1%. You guys know that I buy this every Friday on automatic, okay? Uh, that's with Weeble, which is also the fourth link below. I set it and forget it. But on red days, I go in at deep and I'm just gonna buy my way through for many, many years. And this is not all of the VOO. This is actually a short. This is my smallest portfolio of VOO. I am dead serious about building generational wealth. OK. SCHD, as you can see, I've been buying that every week. Why? Dividend. Simple as that. And then I have some risk. Now you say, hey, man, that's a lot of risk. Look at that. Yeah, you know. If if things turn around, big tank, big tank tech turn around, especially Tesla, which I think it we, it could. All right. 
could at the end of the year, then that arc will turn around and it will start really, really popping. And if not, uh, you let me know what works for you. If not, I'm going to DCA for years to come. I'm committed seven to 10 years. I'm actually committed 10 to 20 years if I'm blessed to live that long. All right, good people. So you guys, let me know what you think. Let me know what stock you are or crypto. As you can see, my Bitcoin is up and then I keep DCA in the ship. That's my little play money. All right. I don't put big money into it. Little play money, right? Small cap, small money, big cap, big money, right? And so I look for opportunity on red days because I know in the long run, they'll be good. Now, I have a lot of other ETFs, uh, vanguards and all of that that I have in my bigger portfolio because half of what I have in the stock market are ETFs in the overall stock market, okay? But let me say this. In closing, this one's going to be a little longer. I am still 80% cash. I'm still 80% cash. And you go, whoa, Larry, really? Really, I'm still 80% cash with all of my investments uh, because um, I just think that the opportunity will present itself for me to go all in when there is a bigger pullback right? And this is not, I'm not telling you to do this. I'm telling you what I'm doing. So if it does happen, and if we do have a recession, I could just go all in and I'm not going all in with garbage. I'm going all in with ETFs, the S and P, the overall stock market, Apple, Google, Microsoft. I'm going in with those type of stocks. You guys let me know what you think. The truth of the matter is, is all you need is time and to continue to what dollar cost average. And then while you're dollar cost averaging, don't dollar cost average with some of your money right now. I would suggest now this, I am going to suggest that you save some dry powder. So if we do have a pullback, you'll have some dry powder to pull in. And if you say, Hey, Larry, I don't have that much. Then simply reduce the amount that you're DCAing if that's the route you want to take. Remember, there is not one route to making money in the stock market. There's a thousand roads. Okay. Leave me a comment. Let me guys know. Let me know what you guys think. Live, love, laugh, and learn.